All right, YouTubers, so in this video, we are going to upgrade the uh, CPU in the HP Slim 290. Uh, you could also use this video um, to replace it, obviously. So if you got another Celeron, uh, you could replace it and or uh, just watch this video if you want to remove your processor so um, processors that you can use so most likely this will support uh, any of the 8 gen processors that um, are 65 watts or less so uh, don't necessarily quote me on that uh, do your own research but uh, it's most common with these 300 series motherboards that um, they will support the CPUs that have a TDP of 65 watts or less. So I would not recommend going and buying an i7-8700K and sticking in here. I would not recommend an i5-8600K. Uh, stay away from those. What I would recommend, though, is, uh, you know, things I use sometimes to, to verify uh, with the regular motherboards for the custom computers I build. I'll go to the website of, say, Gigabyte and check to see what it says is compatible. Uh, in this case, there should be on the HP website an exact listing, uh, which I will add to this and or any notes if I've said something incorrect. Uh, if I catch it, if I catch it later, it'll be down in the, uh, uh, the comments or in the, de the, uh, description. But, uh, for the most part, you should be able to, uh, switch this out with, uh, obviously another G4900, uh, the G4920, 8th gen Pentium Gold, so G5400, G5500, and the G5600. Uh, then we're talking i3s, so you should be good to use a i3-8100. And if there's some crazy reason why you'd want to do an i3-8300, uh, you could do that one too. Uh, steer clear of the i3-8350K though, don't recommend that one. Uh, then from there, jump up to the i5s, uh, the 8400, the 8500, and the 8600. Avoid the i5-8600K. Then from there, the i7-8700, but uh, avoid the i7-8700K. All right, so let's get started. Let me get some tools out. All right, so first thing we want to do is, of course, verify that we are unplugged from the wall. Um, take that cord out. We also would disconnect any cables, uh, HDMI, Ethernet, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. They're just going to get in our way. So the first screw we're going to do is uh, here on the side, and it requires a uh, Phillips uh, number two will work. You could probably also use a uh, flathead, and so that comes out pretty easy. Um, oops, just so you can see it. There is where the screw is. Single screw, and then you're going to pull. Put your fingers under here. Okay. Hope you can see that. Put your fingers under there. Pull that off. It's really on there tight. HP's good about, uh, you know, being pretty tight about those uh, those case covers. Uh, I have an HP Envy as well, and it is relatively tight. So uh, here's your CPU, and uh, I'll tell you, this is different than uh, most of them. Okay, so. A lot of these are really simple. This guy is going to be a slightly pain in the butt, I can tell. Um, why is that? Because of this thing here. So, all right, first thing I'm going to do just to get it out of here, I'm going to remove the uh, four pin uh, connector here. And this is actually kind of a difficult to get at. So, I'm going to use a uh, tool to get it out of there um, then I'm going to undo this around here um, just to get it out of there because with that cable there the cover's not going to come out 
All right, so let's try and get in here real close, folks. We're shooting 120 degree angle, and I hope this is working at home for y'all. So we got these tabs here. We're gonna pop these out, and uh, you know some of these videos, I uh, suffer through them. Actually, take off the uh, this cable leading to the CD player. All right, so sometimes it takes brute strength to get this stuff out of here. Um, sometimes you got to finesse them. But uh, there's that cable, and um, I've actually. Um, there's also a SATA cable that's uh, usually connected there, but uh, I have redirected it to have an additional hard drive in here, so uh, hence you won't see it. I rarely ever use my um, rarely ever use my CD ROM player, so hence why it's that way. All right, so now that we got that, let's um, continue to try and work this thing out of here, pulling, pushing out the tabs. Okay. And uh, this is one of those things that's not the easiest, but there we go. And I did not disconnect that guy. So, but at this point, it's out of the way. All right, finally. Now we're down to the CPU, okay? So, uh, normally these take the Phillips head. And uh, in this case, it looks like it might actually be an Allen. Let me double check. So this useful tool that I have, um, I use a lot now. I, I just bought this thing actually for reading. And it's uh, being used more down here. I'm probably going to need to buy a second one. It not only lights stuff up, but you can see it magnifies. And uh, if we're in the right spot, you can see that that is not a... Um, not a hex head uh, screw there, so we're going to have to go find some more tools. All right, YouTuber, so it actually looks like it's a, uh, a Torx. Um, I believe this is a uh, T20 uh, by 2. So just like the automotive industry, they don't want you screwing with your... Uh, with toys they would rather you um, go get it worked on by a professional something like that who knows all right so it's coming out usually uh, you know sometimes you have to do these in a certain order um, they would be, you know, norm numbered one, two, three, four, and you would do one and three, and then two and four. Um, in this case, though, we're going to assume that uh, they're okay to go out this way. Usually on the way uh, back in, that's what matters more. All right, so we've got all but one of these ready to come out. And so this is going to have thermal paste on uh, that side, which uh, is actually kind of crap load coated. Um, so we'll clean that off, and we will clean off the, uh, the CPU. I'm going to clean it off before I take it out of there. Now, usually I have something better to clean this with, but at the moment we're uh, going this route. Because I'm actually just going to put this back on the, uh, the shelf and I'll clean it better later. Alright, so um, same thing with the CPU fan. I'm going to get this gunk off here. All right, so it's pretty much cleaned off. We'll get the right stuff to clean that off later. 
All right, so to get this, this out of here, um, I'm basically just going to do that, and voila. And then, you know, if it's winter time, I would not suggest uh, touching this uh, without some kind of protective gear. Uh, seeing as it's winter, not winter, summertime, I feel pretty good about it. But there's your CPU transistors and voila so we're going to put this back in we will uh, do that in a second here all right so depending on what uh, CPU we put in we of course need our thermal paste and uh, once I put the uh, CPU in there um, we will put some on there now Something you should have noticed uh, when you pulled it out. There is uh, usually a nice marking uh, on the uh, motherboard or right here on the cover um, to let you know how to line this up. So on the CPU itself, there is a, a gold triangle in that, uh, that corner there. Hopefully you can see that. So we know that that needs to point in that direction, okay? So we're gonna gently put that in there. And there are, there are tools out there to do this much more safer than I just did it. Um, and of course, you really should spend more time cleaning this up. What's gonna actually happen to this CPU is it's getting completely pulled out in a different computer, so um, I would do a much better job if uh, I was actually putting this back uh, permanently. So, all right, so this is where you gotta be careful. This thing needs to rock in there just right. Otherwise, you can uh, take your, your CPU for a ride, okay? And when that happens, the transistors get wrecked. All right, so it's in there. Now, I would put, um, just a dab of thermal paste on there, okay? Then we're going to, we've cleaned the CPU fan off. We're gonna put the CPU fan back in. Remember, Torx uh, 20. And then this time I'm going to, um, Do this one and then go across and do the other one and you know for the most part why you might want to do that is because of the, uh, the spring loading in these things Oop. I hit the camera so I always worry when I uh, record with this close that uh, we are gonna miss something and then I'm just going to go around and around um, getting this initially started. So um, when you boot this up later, there's a good chance it might say, hey, um, you know, you added, excuse me, you changed out your CPU and it'll give you some message. Then you'll just hit continue and it'll be good to go. I, uh, I do have an i3-9100, so in a future video we may actually see if this is upgradable to night gen, which would make it really nice. All right, so from there, um, basically just follow the steps backward that we uh, we just did. You would then, you know, get this monstrosity back in here. Um, good luck with that. And... Uh, This is where I'm going to have difficulty. But yeah, you would get this thing back in here without breaking anything, hopefully, including your RAM that's uh, might be sitting close. All right, so boom, that's in there. Uh, reroute your cable wire 
back into there and uh, pretty much uh, you are uh, going to put your uh, case back on and you will be golden. All right, so I'm going to leave it at that and uh, no sense recording something that uh, you guys don't need me uh, for. Thanks for checking out the video. Please like, please subscribe.